So this is a very special moment and I'm uh, very happy to bring uh, like the message of the master, the beast, the real Greg Cardone. And I want to introduce for uh, people who probably, there can be some of my audience who don't know, but I talk about this uh, big man a lot. So he owns around 20 companies. Yeah, I'm all right. Has over 700 employees. Raised over a hundred million for charity. Yeah. Wrote 11 books, which one of them is super, super successful book, 10X Rule, which I think inspired and motivated like millions of people around the planet for real. And actually 10X became massive worldwide movement, created the best and the biggest business conference in the world, 10X Growth Con. That's fact. That's real. Oh, 100%. Sold out the Madeline Stadium in Miami with 35,000 people. We sold 35,000 tickets to that thing. We yeah. sold 30, so 36. 000. No, no. And 34,500 people were in the room. Uh huh. So, like, we sold more tickets yeah. than seats yeah. by 2,000 and still didn't fill up every seat. Oh, my gosh. Unbelievable. All and the people, th- and you, what's crazy? I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah. What's craziest. Go ahead. I had never done anything like that before. Mm. So, we, we, I didn't want to do it. Mm. Sherry, my COO, thank God to smart women, comes to me one day and says, let's do the Marlins Stadium. It's a brand new stadium. It's oh, it was her idea. Yeah. Why do you want to be a rock star? Uh, no, you I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it, dude. Like, I'm like, like it's ridiculous. I, 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 this, this is crazy. Sherry, there's 34,000 people in that stadium. The Marlins cannot fill up the stadium. Yeah. Nobody even goes to yeah. the stadium. I'm like, and by the way, it's about 25 minutes from my house, and I hate driving any place. So I'm like, I don't want to go down there. So what? she kept hammering me and hammering me and hammering me. I'm like, okay, I'll go down there one day. You for sure. Okay. I told her no for three months. I walk into the stadium. I walk in from the back. I look out. I get to the second level. The stadium's down mm-hmm. here. The field's down here. And I'm on the second level. I mean, this thing goes way up here, right? Mm-hmm. And I get on the second level. I'm looking out from behind. You guys play baseball over there? No, no I'm like, you know baseball, baseball, right? Yeah, but yeah. I know, yeah. So- I'm behind the plate mm. where the catcher and the umpire are. Mm. And I was like, oh, my God, I can see second base, first base, third base, outfield. And I saw the vision, man. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to fill this place up. Shit. And I said, what if we, how many seats are here? And they said 26,000 seats around. And I said, but what if we put seats down on the field? Mm. He said, you can do another, you know, six or 8,000 down there. I said, I'll take the whole Yes. Place. I'll take it all, man. I saw it in a second, but it it just goes to show you, like, you could be negative and close-minded to something Uh until you see it. She saw it. I didn't. Mm. I was close-minded, but once I saw it, I was like, oh, yeah, I get it. Let's Mm. do it. And then we spent the next year. We had never sold that many seats in my entire career. Yeah. So at that time, I was probably 2018, 19, whatever it was. It's probably I was probably crazy. No, 61 years old. I never sold that many seats yeah. in my entire career combined. Mm. And I had to do that for one event. And we did. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Father of two super smart and beautiful kids and husband. Over 17 million followers on all social media combined. You like the motivation style, which is unbelievable, especially in today's society. Released almost 6,000 videos on YouTube. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, bro. Like 6,000. Yeah. I'm into production, so I checked like the constant production. It's my overnight success here, you're talking about. Yeah. With over a half a billion views. Yeah. Oh, no, no. I've had more than a half a billion. On like on YouTube. Social, yeah, it will be billions. Yeah. Billions. I'm talking just YouTube. Yeah, which are both, by, by the way, terrible numbers. Yeah. The, 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 you know, for that to actually be an impressive number, it would have to be in the hundreds of billions. Like, I'm not impressed by any of my social media numbers, just so you know. Like, like if you really want to, if you believe you have something that's great and you really want to take responsibility for it, having 17 million followers, it'd be like, I'm going to solve water by, with that one bottle of water. Like, it's, mm. that, you can't, you cannot. Yeah. Compared to 8 billion people. Uh, you can't, yeah. just 8 billion that are distracted a thousand times a day. So, yeah. you're talking about, you're not talking about reaching 8 billion. You're talking, you'd have to reach probably 80 billion or 800 billion yeah. or maybe even 8 trillion people that are changing all day long. Mike was Mike when he woke up. He's tired. He doesn't want to go to work. And then yeah. he gets to work. He's a different Mike. And then uh, at lunch, he's a different guy. And then at 2 o'clock, he's a different guy. Like, you're having to reach somebody. By the time he gets home, he goes and gets yeah. drunk. He's a different guy now. Yeah. You know, so 
Yeah, we're going to talk about it because you said you want to reach seven, eight billion. And last interviews, I saw that you want to transition yeah. from social. So, yeah, yeah, we're on keep it for, it. Keep it for later. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, yes, boys and here girls. is the man. And I heard rumors that they are going to add to the Webster Dictionary another definition of the word production. Uncle G, Grant I, Cardone. And Nico. It should, bro, it should be. And Nico. Yeah. yeah. Definition of production. For me, I watch you like four or five years, all my stuff back in the country. They're like on your stuff, your university. Yeah. yeah. We have your license also, one of my companies. So I'm very happy to bring uh, knowledge of this superhero to my audience in Czech and Slovak because I'm fighting and grinding so hard to change the mindset over there. Yeah. Because it's still very like, you know, small mindset. Mainly rich people are hiding. Yeah. So somebody become rich, they hide. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, because yeah. you don't talk about the, the money there. I'm the first who, who did like big success with yeah, talking yeah. openly about money. Yeah. Right? Because oh, shit is important, right? Yeah. So thank you, man. Thank yeah. you for being here. Thanks for coming down here and thanks for sharing my message with your audience. And uh, you know, this this thing about talking about money is a new thing. Yeah. And and even production and the importance yeah. of work. Yeah. To happiness. I was doing an interview recently, and, and these guys, my daughter Sabrina was with me, and they said, do you want your kids to be happy? And I says, no. I want my kids to be productive. productive. Mm -hmm. I know. Like, I'm not, I don't, oh, I oh, hope my kids are happy. That's up yeah. to them, dude. Like, yeah. you, you can't buy happiness. Okay? You can't buy it. It's not for sale. You got to earn it. Mm. And the way to earn happiness is to produce, yeah. is to be productive. Mm. You sit around all day. This translates to every human being on this planet. I've been to Russia, Australia, Prague. Mm. I've been to uh, all over Latin America, down to Brazil, talked to hundreds of thousands of people down there, millions of people in America. Mm. Nobody's happy if, mm. they're, if they're not productive. Sitting around all day, playing a game. Sooner or later, you might enjoy the game for a little while, bro, but everybody gets overrun on the game. Yeah, boredom is, is the killer. Yeah, and so it's the, not just for maniacs, okay? Like, yeah. And I know everybody wants to take a vacation and kick back and tan and enjoy themselves and have a drink or two or and have fun and blah, blah, blah. But most people don't actually even enjoy the time off because they're worried about how am I going to pay the bills? Mm. Okay. Rich kids mm. that have too much time. Mm. You can see they're miserable. Yeah. They're drug addicts. Yeah. Suicide rates go up. Yeah. Why? Because they're not producing anything. Yeah. So um, the point is, I think production is undervalued in our society oh, and two the the conversation that we have about money the fact that you gravitate to this yeah. idea that i would talk about money and make it all right yeah um when i was growing up my mom said you don't talk about politics you don't talk about money and you don't talk about religion mm. i talk about them all love it I'm like, let's talk about it. a lot of shit and i forgot mention first four billion in real estate yeah four and a half billion over twelve thousand apartments units yep Going, going, going to, to 20,000 here in the next Unbelievable. little bit. Has over 13,000 investors in Cardon Capital. Mm -hmm. Raise around 1 billion through social media. 1.2 billion. The, through social media. Yeah, yeah. Without no ad budget. I think our ad budget last year for $300 million raise was 70 grand. Shit. Wow. Never, that's never been done before. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, courage level you have to speak. You are. The most open guy in the world about money. Well, I mean, the IRS knows. The IRS is the Internal Revenue Service, so they know. So I'm like, I don't know why I wouldn't. Yeah. And I always say, like, if somebody, people, like, say, like, uh, is it legit or what? Like, people who are really open about money yeah. and out there is the proof that they're ethical because they're not hiding. Yeah. Right? If you're out there, is the proof that you have nothing to hide. Yeah. Tim Cook made $99 million last year working at, as the CEO of Apple. Mm. Like, I, I don't hate on him because he made $99 million. Okay? Uh, they sold a bunch of phones, too. Uh, the guy that runs Peloton made $245 million. Mm. That's $20 million a month, man. Mm. It's crazy. Yeah. Like, it's public data. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know what the big thing yeah, is. Huh? I, don't, I, I don't know what the big deal is. I can't tell people what I made. Okay, well, yeah. why not? Fighters can show their belt. People, pe exactly. People complain when they don't make money. They're like, uh, I only make 60 grand a year. They only pay me 60 grand a year. Well, good. I only made $60 million last year. 
and I'm complaining too. Yeah. Like, but you guys hate on me because I'm like, it's a big number to you. If I was a fighter, yeah. if I was a boxer, if I was in the UFC, I would show you my how many times I yeah. tap people out. Like, if if I was uh, uh, playing playing soccer or football or baseball or any sport, I'd be like, look how many rings I got. But yeah. when you're in business. Yeah. Or economics, yeah. or money, or real estate. Look, real estate is my ring. Yeah. So why wouldn't I tell people? Look, absolutely. Man. And there is a one. Sp- I, I think people are not triggered with the athletes showing their successes because they show it like, yeah, it's their area. I don't play there, right? But there is a one sport, yeah. which we everybody compete, it's, and it's money. It's business and money, bro. No matter if you're an employee or businessman, everybody making money. So it's only yeah. sport on the planet. We play yeah. the game, everybody. Yeah. So that's why people here's are treated the because they, some people losing. Yeah. Here, here's the difference, okay? Women go on Instagram and show their, their fake tits. Yeah. Their, their pumped up butt asses. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, put filters on. Yeah. And nobody cares. Bro, that's fraud, bro. That's fraud. <laughs> that's fraud, Okay. Come on, keep it real. Yeah. You guys, you 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 influencers that rent the freaking Lambos and the the rolls and take pictures. All these people that are taking pictures and running planes. They don't fucking fraud. Yeah. Goddamn scam is what that is. Yeah. Now I go online and say, today I have one hundred and let me just see what the number is today. Uh, so so I'm giving you a real number. I don't know. So eighty one million dollars in one account. Hmm. Boom, there it is. And then I'm like, oh, he's a bragger. He's showing off. Rich people don't do that. Uh, wrong. I'm a rich person doing it. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Finally, I'm bringing the rich guy to my country because in my country, yeah. rich people don't talk on social. Yeah, because you came from your communist yeah. influenced country. Yeah, and anybody that made yeah. anything there was probably yeah connected yeah. and had to be yeah. quiet yeah. because they got yeah. their money. Like yeah. this is this old adage about do you have the saying fly under the radar. Yeah, of course. Fly under the radar. Of course. My my uncle said you need to fly under the radar. I yeah. said why? If you have clean hands. And you're not doing anything wrong. There's no reason. Now, I understand you can get attention that's unwarranted. You don't want it. But typically, that old saying, fly under the radar, uh, the highest poppy gets cut first, um, you know, the monkey that climbs highest, they're looking at you like you're an ass. All, all these little dumb sayings, you know, don't, you, be seen and not heard. Yeah, okay, cool, but we're in a new time now, okay? This is a new time. Yeah. And, it, it, you know, if you don't get attention for your brand and, yeah. and your successes, I'm not saying you need to show off. Yeah. Look, I, I would say you have I, to. I'm, wear, I'm wearing $50 blue jeans. No, I, I would these, say- these jeans, let me just tell you, your, your clothes are worse more than mine are right now. These jeans, I'll bet you I've had these jeans. I wore these on Undercover Billionaire, and I shot that show in 2020. Mm. These jeans are four years old, maybe five or six. Mm. They're my favorite jeans. Mm. Okay. These shoes. You balance. These shoes are what? I don't know, 100 bucks. They're not five hundred dollars. Although you you got the plane, it ain't you got, got the beer. It don't have Gucci all over it. My wife's dripped in Chanel. I hate all that shit. Mm. Okay, this shirt, my favorite shirt, uh, and and, uh, and another shirt underneath it. It's like th- there's no money, man. Like I'm now, I got a bunch of money in the bank, and you, you, because I don't. He got I, the bird. He got I don't wear this. Like I don't. I don't. W- I didn't waste it here. I got a little watch right here. No big deal. All, all I'm saying is like. Why hate on me because I show people that platinum record back there? Yeah. We don't give platinum records in business, mm. but you do as a rapper. Uh, yeah. I was talking to Ye's team yesterday. Mm. This guy's got his wall stacked with platinum records. I'm like, where's my goddamn platinum record? Like, there's my platinum, right? I've sold millions of copies of the 10X rule yeah. on audio. Yeah. They don't even count it as a yeah. book sale. Yeah. So those are my bragging rights. Like, guys, I only have this long to live this life as Grant Cardone. I'm a brag. Now, you want to go hide in a in a corner of your house and not tell anybody about what you did? Maybe because you're not doing anything. That's on you. That's your business. I am not going to ridicule you for it. Yeah. But, you know, a lot, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of different things going on right now that people are like, okay, you're rocking Gucci. You're showing off other people's brand. You got your Nike yeah. shoes on. Look at Nike. Well, you don't even own Nike. Yeah. Like, that doesn't even make any sense to me. Like, you're going to brag about somebody else's brand. By the way, the name, uh, Wells Fargo is your bank. Wells Fargo was a man, mm. okay? J.P. Morgan was a man before he was an institution. The Rockefellers were people before they were. The Rothschilds, that is not a bottle of wine, bro. That's a family mm. that you're giving two grand to yep. for every time you drink their bottle. Yep. So 
the Trump name. The Trump name is going to end up being a brand forever. Yeah. And then people go stay at the Trump Hotel, right? So all I'm saying is if you really want to study success and learn it, the people that are most successful in the beginning days got a lot of attention. Mm. All the way back to the Vanderbilts and the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds and yeah. the Morgans, et cetera. Yeah. Look at Elon. Yeah. He's amazing. He's, He's amazing. He's a player. Okay. He's a player. You know. So we're in a new time because you wouldn't, 20 years ago, you didn't say go fuck yourself. Yeah. Elon said, say, on yeah. national TV and hey, Bob, go fuck yourself. Multiple D times. Disney. Yeah. Yeah. So the, see, that's because he is mine, but back to the thing. Because to just know, I want to bring the, the mainly the message uh, that money is important because for my country, yeah, is the, the, the stumble point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, because we have to first handle the purpose why to have money. Because I understand people think, you know, they, they live one life, you know, to just enjoy whatever. But if people don't have purpose for something, is the first step. Well, do you have to handle why to do something? So you see, yeah. Elon, there is a big purpose. Now he can like say anything he wants. He do the Twitter to X, right? To free platform. Because he has money. Yeah. It's the main reason why he can do that. Yeah. So that's why money are important. You know, I don't, you say that I'm telling that all the time to my people that let's say, okay, why money are, are important? Why? Because you can't go anywhere on the planet where it's yeah. not exchanged for the goods and services. It is only important. I don't have any money on me today, right? Like I don't, like I don't need money in my pockets. I don't, but if I want a better parking spot, I need cash to pay the guy. If yeah. I want, better food for my kids. I need money to pay for that. Yeah. If I would like freedom from constant worry, I can't eliminate all fear or worry in my life. Man, I don't need to have it with money. Like I need, I, I need to be worried about things I can't control. Yeah. I don't mind. Be, okay. I'm worried about what's going to go on in Korea or Russia or, you know, what happens in China. I, I, I don't really have control about that. So all those things worry me. What happens later? Blah, blah, blah. What happens yeah. when I get old? My knees don't work. Yeah. But man, why should I worry about how my kids or my people are paid? Okay. I don't I don't want to lose I'm losing an employee I have right now. By the way, the energy is unbelievable when we Oh, you went to the beach? Yeah. Yeah. You feel just the like everybody's like going, you know, hype. You know, when you go to some places people are like sad, like, you know, hear everybody hype, happy, hood emotions, yeah. or the receptionist, or the volley guy. Like, yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. The energy, it's like... Because we have enough people here winning, yeah. right? To, to, yeah. to, to lift the spirit yeah. of the handful that maybe yeah. not aren't. Yeah. They're just being mediocre. Yeah. They're just kind of fitting in. I got, I got a guy I'm about, I'm about to lose, right? And if you're an employer, if you've ever had people, you've had somebody you spent time, energy, money, resources on, and then they leave, okay? Well, this guy came to my office yesterday, Seven years he's been here, he's crying. He's mm -hmm. like, man, I got to talk to you, man. I got to talk to you. What's up, bro? He's like, man, I got this opportunity. I said, yeah. He's like, hey, man, you've been so good to me. He's like, my dad, you've done more for me than my dad did. And, like, there's two genes in my life. True story, this guy said, there's God and there's you. I was like, that's heavy, bro. Said, Come on. He says to me, he's like, man, I have this opportunity mm -hmm. to go work mm -hmm. for this country's government they're going to pay me i mean some huge money like mil t millions and millions of dollars okay. and i said bro go do it now he's not leaving here because i don't pay him a lot of money he earns a lot of money here. yeah and he's got a great environment yeah but he's got this other opportunity that's so big yeah. i can't possibly compete with it but I, back to the money thing i don't want people leaving here except in those exceptional situations because they couldn't make enough money yeah. here. If they want to leave because they want to go do something else, cool, go do it, man. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. We have a thousand employees across all the operations, maybe a little more than that now. Yeah, uh, sixty percent of maybe seventy, eighty percent of them are not going to be here the whole time. It's cool. I just want them to have fun while they're here. Yeah, make a contribution. And when they leave here, the only thing I care is they leave here. I want them to miss it a little bit. Yeah, like God dang, man, I missed the vibe there. Yeah, you know. Yeah, definitely. It's also like big stress, like. I like 60, 70 stuff people and like they all need money, right? Yeah. So every one of them. Yeah. Yeah. It'll so, be their number one concern. It, money is the number one concern of people. Okay. When, when you get, when you, when you have a health problem or your mama has a health problem, then guess what? You're, you're concerned about mama and you will spend anything to solve that mama's problem or your sister's problem. 
you didn't spend anything. You're like, you don't care about money anymore. Yeah. You're like, hey, man, whatever the cancer treatment costs, send them to Germany, take care of it. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter. You'll borrow money, you'll sell stuff because you're like, it's not about the money, man. It's about what does money well, get you. One of the agree for me was the break point because my dad, he was a truck driver, like work. All my family are employees. All. I'm the first. Like all. Right. Uh-huh. And he was truck driver. I saw my dad one time per week because Monday, go to the Europe as a truck driver. I saw him just Sunday. Right. He was great dad, like hardworking. And I, when I get into money, he was like still like, you know, yeah, he grew up in communist, so it was like yeah, yeah. fear all the time, right, bro? Like I'm fear of you if you get it. You know, I was moving to Prague a little bit. I live on the street when I was starting because I didn't want to grab money from my family. And then he was still like, still the fixed idea that don't go for money. You know, it's yeah. danger. It's yeah. danger, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after COVID, he got stroke uh-huh. after vaccine. Oh wow, fucking. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. So my dad, right? I I, I love him to death. Because he was working so hard so to feed three kids. And actually, I think he didn't say it to me, but when I helped him because I paid for his private, you know, uh, care, uh-huh. and I bought him like steam cells uh-huh. because he was losing memory a little it bit. Cost a bunch of money. Uh, a lot, right? Yeah. yeah. So I was so proud to be able to take care of him. Then he got it. He's, yeah, he got it. He's like, oh, shit. Yeah, because that. until, you know, in my country, you have TV, you have beer, you have, you yeah. know, you, you you think you're fine. Yeah, right. So you're not. Exactly. This is what I always say, man. Exactly. How much is enough? Well, enough is enough until yep. it's not. And the moment is not enough, then you're like, shit, I need money. And that's the only thing you need at that moment. Man, the most powerful and true thing you ever said is the selfish thing. Yeah. When people say, I don't need it. Uh, I don't need money to have. Uh-huh. I I feel good with what I have. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. And you yeah. say it's selfish. And I was like, shit. Yeah. Because you try to like defend myself. Like no, no, no. But it's important. But you said it correctly. Like yeah. straight. Like real, real man told. Like you selfish. Yeah. You talk I. Yeah. Me. Yeah. And what about community? What about family? What about charities? Yeah. What about church? What yeah. about? It's so true, man. Yeah. Like, so the concept here is like. Because I, I hear people, and, and for you guys that are online that are, you know, putting in comments, money's not that important. That's all these two guys talk about, blah, blah, blah. Guys, like, I've heard all that. Like, all your comments, every comment that you have about me, just save yourself some time. I've already heard it. It's not even an original comment anymore. It's like, at this point, anything you say, I've already heard. Yeah. And some of it might be true, by the way. Okay? I've already said money will not make you happy. I've said it. Now, and and, and, and enough is enough. Until it's not enough. Meaning, yeah, if you got air conditioning and heater, if if you were if you grew up in communist Czech Republic, which was called what before the Czech Republic, it used to be Czechoslovakia. Yeah. So then, and your parent, your grand, your parents were like, uh, you know, war war, war ridden for thirty five years. You're like, oh, man, I got air conditioning and heater. Shit. Yeah. Uh, we got we got we got food. We're good. Okay, yeah. you're good. You're good. Until you're not. Until she died. Until there's an emergency. Yeah. COVID. So you're. It, when, when, anytime somebody says to me, COVID, whatever, yeah. shut down, which yeah. is just a b- bunch of geopolitical stuff. Okay. So when anytime somebody says to me, man, but I'm good. I'm like, no, you're selfish. Yeah. And they're like, what do you mean you're selfish? Well, you got your one bottle of water. Yeah. Okay. But what about when he gets thirsty? You know, what about when that goes away? Yeah. What about when your neighbors get thirsty and the next thing you know, they're raiding your house because now they're thinking about themselves yeah. and they're so thirsty, dude, they're, you know, we forget that people can cannibalize one another. Mm-hmm. It happens every day. Like the world is still cannibalizing other people. What do you mean? I, meaning I'll eat you. I'm hungry, bro. You know, we, we, with the six of us or seven of us go on a plane and we land in the Antarctica and, and shit, we, we crash yeah. You know, I'm like, well, which one of you motherfuckers I'm eating? Who looks the juiciest? I'll eat one of you guys quick. No, you don't. Oh, yeah, I will. 100%. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. As long as I'm... Th- now, if I'm all hurt and beat up, I'm like, who's going to take a little chunk yeah. out of me, huh? Uh, I have some Uncle G for, 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 for dinner tonight. But, but, but the point is, like, selfishness is very, very important in the beginning. Yeah. Selfishness later can actually kill you. 
And so you have to be selfish in the beginning. Say, I got to get, I got to get mine. I got to get my water. I told my wife the other day, we need 100 pallet uh, 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 cartons of water at the house mm. or at this office in case of a situation. Right. I want to be able to take care of me. Yeah. I want to be able to take care of me, her, them. Yeah. Then, okay, then I got to go outside that. So in the beginning, in the very beginning, it was like I was 25 years old and I had to start getting my money right. Only thing I cared about was me. Yeah. I'm going to get enough money and enough bank yeah. to take care of me. Then I'm going to start reinforcing yeah. that. I'm going to get a moat of resources around me. And then I'm going to start helping other communities. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Uh, because because if all you're thinking about is me, my bicycle, my kids, my car, yeah. my house, listen to it, bro. Listen how many times you're saying me, 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 me. It's selfish. Yeah. And that's when somebody says, man, I'm good. I don't need all that stuff. Yeah. You don't. They do. Exactly. Exactly. True shit. So a little bit about your background because speak openly about your drug addiction in the past. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's a big problem. Our country, I think it's second or third worst country in the world. Uh, young people between 13, 17 using marijuana. And, oh, wow. Uh, yeah. And when I was trying to create the biggest anti-drug movement, 40,000 people, uh, young people, we were building workout parties because uh, how the fuck to get young people out of drugs, right? Because I experienced yeah. it too. Yeah, yeah. So it was like, okay, let's use exercise. So we built workout parks. Oh, wow. I create the movement. Be the fucking man. Go out, exercise. And then it's fucking drugs. Because every young person won't be part of the community. Uh -huh. It's why we had the, the hooligans. And, and every, hool every man won't be part of the community. Yeah. But they go out. No, nothing is there. Yeah. So they just go smoke weed, right? Yeah. Because yeah. all the rappers and everything, yeah, right? Yeah. So I was like, shit, how, how to like make it like, so I did marketing. We start doing exercise, one arm pull-ups, muscle-ups outside. We build like millions of views with that. And uh -huh. people start exercising and stopping using drugs. Yeah. Thousands of them, right? Wow. So my first message when I saw was like, don't use drugs. I, I knew well, like, fuck it, because I saw so many, I was a professional basketball player and I saw like my friends getting into drugs and I was growing up with them and they go fucked like, Fuck their life in drugs, right? Yeah. In the, yeah. And it's all started with marijuana, right? Yeah. So no, tell no, me nobody nobody beats drugs. Yeah. Nobody. So you guys out there You did. Well, I did I had to quit to beat yeah. it. But nobody beats it if they continue. Oh like you nobody nobody recreationally long term long term beats drugs. Yeah. Nobody. Drugs wins every time. Yeah. So if you just go back and study all the people that have ever overdosed, all the talented, unbelievable yeah. people, dr drugs have killed so many people on this planet. It's yeah. unbelievable. And 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 even before the permanent, like Elvis death, right? Even or Michael Jackson or side drugs. Well, no, I'm just talking about street drugs. Just the street drugs, like like the death before they announce you dead. Like I died for ten years, and they never pronounced me dead because I finally beat it. Mm -hmm. I finally quit. But why you started? Sorry to I died every day for 10 years, dude. Why you started? My brother, my brother, Russell and Brian uh, were smoking weed. I remember it like it was yesterday. I knew the moment they passed it. I'm like, man, I don't want to do this. Yeah, I'm going to do yeah. it. There's always somebody I violated my own personal self-respect. I knew it was the wrong thing for me. And, and you guys are like, oh, weed's not that big a deal. It's got nothing to do with the weed. I violated my personal self-respect. Drugs accelerate. Like, the next thing you know, you want more and more. Bang, he's just banging out. Now, Now, 16 years old, I smoked my first weed. By the time, by the end of that year, I was using drugs every single day. I had no intention. Sure. I just want everybody to understand. I was a good kid, good family. I did not grow up with a bunch of problems. Like, something happened between the day I started and the next 300 days They just flipped a switch. Mm. This is 55 years ago. This is before drugs were like mainstream problematic. Yeah. This is before psychiatric drugs. Yeah. Today, like today, if if I was 16 years old today, I'd already be on Ritalin. I'd be on Prozac. I'd I'd been treated for ADD, bipolar, uh, depression. Who knows, dude? I would have probably been on drugs since I was seven years old. Yeah. So, so all they've done is replace street drugs now with psychiatric drugs. Yep. America's got the worst problem yeah. on planet Earth. We have more psychiatric drugs consumed in this country. There's a fact. 
than every other country on the planet combined. Shit. We, we represent less than 10% of the population of planet Earth, and we, we consume more yeah. medication here, prescription medication, than any other country. Yeah. We're also the most obese country yeah. on the planet. So for you guys that think Americans are, oh my God, they're so, they're so, um, chargers and, and enthusiastic. And that's not true. Yeah. It's a wrong, that's the wrong impression. Most everybody on the planet has of America. were like these yeah. entrepreneurial people. No, most of them are not. Most of them are medicated, fat. You can just say this, use the headline. American calls other Americans fat, obese, lazy, medicated yeah. zombies. Or what most Americans are. Mm. Hope that doesn't mean you guys. Mm. Why did you quit? Well, because there was a great story like you. Dude, I, I tried so to quit. Out. I tried to quit from the first time I started. I fucking used it the first time. Never going to do it again. I'll bet you I quit every day, 10 times a day for 10 years. I'll bet you I quit 3,650 times. And then one day I quit, and it and it stuck. Was it after... You were like crashed and banged with the guy. With yeah, the no, I was 23. I got beat up. I had 20, uh, had 76 stitches put in my head and face. You can see scars over both my eyes, down here, over my lip. Uh, they're all on the top of my head when I did it. It was a drug dealer, right? Yeah, it was a drug dealer. They came, came into your house? Yeah, they came over to give me drugs. And then they left and stole money and beat me up and mm. made her, you know, it, it was nasty. And so, um, but I wouldn't, that did, I didn't quit using drugs because so, no. After you, I was using the story of your mom. I was in the so, hospital using drugs. Yeah, to chill down. No, no, That's what drug drug addicts do, bro. Drug addicts have lost control. I lost complete control. Mm. So your mom was the last. My mom said, "My mom said two years later after that, mm. she said, I'm done. Do not come back to my place of business.' And uh, was it the turning point? Yeah. And then, well, and then, and then four four or five days later, I was in a treatment center. Yeah. Mom, right? Everybody was starting to turn on me. Even the guy I got my drugs from. He's like, bro, you got a problem. Like, when the people you're doing drugs with say you got a problem, you got a problem. See, a guy, uh, the problem with a, a guy like me, okay, the kind of energy I have, I've always had this energy. Like, I've always been intense. I've always thought, oh, let's go get it, man. Like, like I want to have fun in a big way. I want to win in a big way. Like, oh. And I'm, I'm, I'm very childlike. You, you're you're yeah. very similar. We're yeah. both very very immature people. Yeah. I'm giving you space. I'm all the time, you know. You know, but it's your space. So. <laughs> yeah. So so uh, I'm interrupting. Yeah, but but when I hit the drugs, man, the drugs that were like, you know, it just same thing. I just went all in. And then with the the other problem is when you get off of drugs, then the people around you that you're try, you're cleaning up with, unless you figured out how to do that in a vacuum, I didn't know how to do that by myself, so I yeah. had to get help. So everybody around me, you're powerless and you're unmanageable and your life's screwed up and you're a drug addict and you're always going to be a drug addict. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, no, I ain't going to always be a drug addict, bro. Yeah. I'm done. Now, I need y'all support to stay off of it. What was your light that in... You were a drug addict, but you still believe that you're going to be like rocks or you're going to grow books. Yeah, you know because may, may, mainly people when they do drugs they quit on dreams. Yeah. But do you still have the light inside. Yeah, what was the light? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I just. I, I just knew, you know, I'd wasted ten years, but I knew I was going to be somebody. Mm. I've always wanted to be somebody. You don't know who cooked the meal at my house last yeah. night. Okay, like people think I got a chef. My wife orders food out. I don't. I would prefer to cook everything myself. Mm. I'd prefer to go to the grocery store and pick it out myself. Mm. Really? Okay. The nanny never picks out the right watermelon. Better than me. The, 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 the nanny never picks out the right blueberries. I'm like, you guys are fucking lazy. You call Instacart, they deliver the shit strawberries. Go to the goddamn store, pick out the best berries. Like, I go through them. I'll even take different containers and switch them up. I'll be like, no, no, I'm going to take these four strawberries. I don't steal I just rearrange them so I get all the good ones. <laughs> I get all the good blueberries, all the good blackberries, because I'm going to cook them for myself. Right. The real billionaire. Yeah. So that's me. Real like, big. I, I, lo I love going to the grocery store. I love cooking my own food, dude. I love marinating. There's something being smoked in my house right now. I hate it. You hate it, huh? Yeah. And so. No, I'm all fat, right? And I'd probably like even going out in the woods and killing it. Mm. I'd probably enjoy that even more. You'd like that part of it. Mm. You know, hey, I, I killed that and I ate it. 
So I don't know how we got on that topic, but I thought I thought I was going to be somebody. I think I was a hunter once. Yeah. Who would who wasn't a hunter? Yeah. 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 Can I take this call? Because it can be like sure. This could be a four hundred million dollar phone call right here. Boom. Hang on a sec. I still find the time to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy my groceries, and I still find the time to do the interview with you, and I still yeah. spent time uh, watching a TV show with my daughter last yeah. night. So, like, mm. there's all this. Uh, like, the moment I quit making excuses for my life, oh, I'm a drug addict. Mm. Okay, that's an excuse. Yeah, I chose to use drugs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That there was no disease making me yeah. use drugs. Uh, I quit blaming my dad for dying when I was ten. Mm. Uh, when I quit saying I didn't have time to go to the grocery store, mm. dude, if you want good vegetables, yeah. go pick them out yourself. Yeah. You know, or or pay somebody a bunch of money to go pick them out for you. Yeah. One of the two. So um, I'm just saying, like, when I did that, when I changed my mind when I was a kid and said, okay, I am going to get control of my life one little space at a time. Yeah. I, I remember... You heard that phone call right there, but I remember when I could not pay my, back to when you were talking, my rent was $275 a month mm. and I was late three times a year. Mm. Couldn't pay my rent. Mm. I don't want to be that guy anymore. Yeah. And I don't want anybody else to be that guy. Yeah. So I'm not going to go say, t- tell people don't be poor. That's not my message. My message is, dude, you could actually be rich if you want to yeah. be. And you made a comment earlier about, I want to reach 8 billion people. I actually... I just want to reach 8 billion. I don't want to help 8 billion. Mm. I don't want to help you guys that have given up. If you've given up, if you've quit, if you're out of the game, if you're happy and satisfied, I have zero intention or desire to help yeah. you. I want to help people that want help so yeah. bad they're willing to like. Yeah. So I'll run through that wall. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. So can we say that like, Back to the drug. Yeah. It's, uh, I'm very like spreading this message about drugs. Yeah. yeah against drugs. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That the, your mom was the last thing. Tell me why. Because my mom, my mom, and my, not just my mom, my friends, my girlfriend, the, all these people were enabling uh, me. Uh, they were allowing me to do this dumb shit. Yeah. They all knew, by the way. Yeah. Now, my mom back then would say, no, I don't. Oh, she didn't Everybody know. knew, bro. Oh, she didn't know. So everybody knew. Uh-huh. Everybody knows the drug addict's got a drug addict problem. Yeah. You guys, everybody knows. Because once they admit it, they're like, yeah, I knew you had a problem. Yeah. Shit. You know, yeah. like everybody knows. Like every person that I've ever gotten business with and that it turned bad, I knew. I knew it was going to turn bad. I just, I made some allowances. And so that happens around every drug addict. Mom, dad, uncle, aunt, brother, sister. Everybody knows there's a problem. They just don't confront the problem. So once everybody confronted the problem and said, and then tap out. Yeah. Meaning, I'm done. Mm. You're on your own, bro. Go do your thing. Yeah. You, you, you literally have to push the guy out of this. Were you ashamed? Was I ashamed? Yeah. To, I tell you why. Because I'm telling guys like yeah. how family unit is important because I, I respect my dad and yeah, my course. mom. Yeah, it was a shame. You, you have to should be always course. like make your parents proud. Yeah. And how I stopped using drugs. Well, I was hiding, right? Yeah. I'm hiding because yeah. I don't want them to know. Yeah. But they know. Yeah. How I stopped using drugs yeah. because uh, my dad worked so hard for little money. Yeah. To I can have basketball shoes. Yeah. Right. It was it was my thing. I wanted basketball shoes. Yeah. yeah. I didn't have a car or anything. Yeah. And one day I was on drugs. When I stopped playing basketball, I lost purpose. Mm. So what person do when they lost purpose, right? Yeah. Fucking you know. Okay, girls party. I yeah. started using drugs. Yeah. Yeah. And one day I went with my friends. I was on drugs like two or three days. And I, I went to uh, see, watch basketball game in my city, small city, and my dad was there. Mm. The guy who always hurts, worked so hard to buy me the Kobe Bryant shoes, right? Wow. Right? It was my biggest thing. I I just need basketball shoes. I won't be wow. the man. So I went there, and I knew I know I'm on drugs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I met my dad. He was watching the game, and I look at my ass. He's like, yeah, of course. You're on drugs? Uh-huh. Bro, I, I was so the most ashamed in my life because in my mind was like, bro, was, he was what six days, no nine to five. Yeah, he was away from the family yeah. because he was driving. Yeah, you know, around the whole Europe. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, man, I was so ashamed deep in my soul. Yeah, last time I quit yeah. that moment. Well, I, I told him no. Uh huh. You lied to. Him. I told him yeah. yeah. I told him no. Because I was so ashamed. Yeah, and I felt so bad. Yeah. 
I was seeing the light. Okay, I'm done. So the, the well, good for you. They show how old were you? I were twenty two. Yeah. Twenty two. See, I just used drugs for like half a year or one. Yeah, day. yeah. Good for you, man. Because I wasted. You guys, you guys out there, man. If you guys know a drug addict, mm. somebody consuming drugs, telling you nobody wins this game. I'm not a, I'm not a perfect person. Like I'm not a, I'm not. Tell, I, I don't have any moral judgment on it. I'm just telling you. You will not beat the drug game. If you got a, if you got a loved one that's using drugs, yep. you got to tell them stop it. Or stop me. One of the two. Just tell them to stop coming here. Go do yourself. Go kill yourself if you want to. Mm. I don't want anything to do with it. And and um, because you're, you're killing yourself. Yeah. You, you don't have to die yeah. to die. Yeah. And you're hurting your loved ones. You're, you're just hurting yourself. Like, you have no potential. Like, if you think you, if you're an artist and you're using drugs and you think it makes you more creative, trust me. You don't know how creative you could be if you're aware and, and alive and. And you can really, like, it's you. Yeah. Because if you have to depend on a drug for creativity, yeah. how much creativity do you even have? Yeah. Right? You're dependent on a drug, something to happen. Yeah. And so that's the problem, the dependence. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. Yeah. Man. Can we move on from the drug thing, man? Exactly. People don't want to hear about exactly. that all day. Everybody's like, I ain't got a drug problem. Why are they talking about drugs? Somebody you know. Well, maybe somebody yeah. you know has one. Yeah. Yeah, everybody has yeah. pills, like. Medical pharmaceutical is yeah, yeah. the biggest yeah, fucking it's, drug it's, dealer. Yeah. Yeah. The other guys, we are coming for you, guys. One day. What made you to get into sales? Like, you know, uh, sales was just, a, 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 it was. And you hated it. Yeah, I hated it. It was, it was survival. You know, it was something uh, the company I worked at. Uh, I, couldn't, car I couldn't drive a truck. I couldn't catch a football. I wasn't a scientist. Uh, let's see what else I couldn't do. The only thing you can do in the town I lived in was hard labor, refinery, oil and gas stuff, or you had a sales job. Which you did for a while, right? Yeah, I did that. I was terrible at it. Yeah. And <laughs> I was terrible at all that stuff. And so, um, and, and, you know, the refinery job, they, they paid, I don't know, whatever it was, 20 bucks an hour. You make a bunch of money, but then you didn't have the potential of make more money. Yeah. And then I, when I came out of the treatment center, this this organization said, hey, we'll hire you. Mm. Even they knew that I, I had this problem. Mm. And you screw up one time, dude, it's over. Mm. And I went there, man. I put my head down, mm. meaning I focused. Car sales. I hated sales. Car sales. Right? Yeah. 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 But, I mean, they could have hired me for furniture, appliance. What is? Sh it wouldn't have mattered. I didn't take any job. Mm. They could have been like, because mm. I needed a job. I needed something to do. And I threw myself into this job, and I've started studying every book I could on sales. Brian Tracy, all these old legend guys. Yeah. The, yeah. Some of the names I forget now. Um, yeah. Norman Vincent Peale, and mm. it was really my first time into the self improvement stuff. Mm. And I threw myself into it. I'm like, wow, man, this is amazing. Mm. You know, oh, I mean, I could be in control. Mm. And uh, and dude, I I went crazy with it. Yeah. It's character with the mentality of whatever it takes because although you hated it, yeah, you get good at it. So tell like young people like how important it is like to you know because I'm well, telling, like all the young guys get the job and make yeah. money first. Just, I mean, first thing I did was getting good at it. Mm -hmm. Then I got better at it, and then I became. Although you didn't like it, I didn't like it. Yeah, I didn't like it even when I was getting good at it. I didn't like it when I became an expert because there is that thing do whatever. It, do things you love, man, yeah, dude. So yeah, you know, I, I I didn't talk about it. I, there were, I didn't have I didn't have the leisure to do what I loved. I don't even know what this means. Mm -hmm. Go do what you love and what you're passionate about. I did not have those options. I had to do what I could do. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't have any choices, dude. I'd wake up some days depressed. I didn't have the leisure to be depressed. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to go to work. I didn't have that leisure. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. I didn't feel like doing it. I didn't have the leisure. I don't give myself those options. Mm. So I didn't like sales. It's the only thing I could do. So I'm like, shit, I'm going to get good at sales. Yeah. And I, I I went to school for accounting. I'd, have, I'd have had a degree in accounting, a good degree. Mm. I didn't do accounting. I did the thing that could make me money. Yeah. And so I got good at it. Then I became great at it. And then I became an expert at it. And then I became a master. And then I became, then I created a damn business out of it. Mm. The thing I hated, which is crazy, 
the very thing I hated would end up becoming I become a I, I end up selling a book yeah about that would become a best selling book yeah. like like I the, all those guys that I studied Brian Tracy and Tom Hopkins and all those guys mm. dude I made more money than all those guys combined yeah yeah is that Sabrina yeah yeah you know and she hears these stories this is my fourteen year old my twelve year old they've heard these stories for yeah my whole life yeah you know. So back to the sales because, yeah. you know, to advise to young people, to young people, you know, because one of the good advice is go sell something, right? And make your first money to move yeah. out of, you know, parents' house. Everybody should learn how to sell. You guys, you guys, you guys, you guys should be insisting on learning how to sell something when you're eight, yeah. nine years old, 10 years old. Yeah. Don't wait until you're 18, yeah. 20, man. Learn how to sell stuff when you're, when you're a kid. Yeah. You don't have to wait until you're in the job force. Parents, you should force your kids to go out and sell things. Yeah. You know, have your kids working for the, for the family. Yeah. And now what I see as a problem, like why do you think that sales is seen by some people in society as a career you have to lie or trick people or say whatever to just get ahead? Because I think one of the reason is that, for example, the movie Volvo Wall Street, right? So many young people watched. It showed very bad. That, that guy wasn't a salesman. That guy wasn't a salesman. That guy was a thief. Yeah, yeah. Look, exactly. Was a it's, it's a bad example of sales. Yeah. So people associate even even back all the guys that I've mentioned earlier. Okay, they're using tricks, right? They were tricks, man. All that was tricks and gimmicks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tom Hopkins, which I loved Tom dearly because he he taught me about the ability to control a conversation. Mm. But it was a bit of manipulation. Yeah. All the NLP stuff. I have never, we've hired, without exaggeration, mm. we probably had 3,000 salespeople come to my organization mm. that I had paid a salary to. Any one of them that ever had NLP was a failure here. Every single one of them. There's never, they knew all this stuff. They're going to do this yeah. mirroring yeah. thing and yeah. copy. Psychologists. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm like, bro, yeah. what are you doing? When you're trying to match him, you ain't you. Mm. The most powerful thing in sales is to be authentic, transparent, and honest. Love it. Okay? Hey, this bottle of water, you don't need it until you need it. Okay? It's overpriced. It's completely ridiculous. We put a 10X label on it. And look, you could probably live, what, three? How long can you go without water? Three days. You can probably go 72 hours without it. Yeah. And then person be like, I don't want to wait that long for it. Good. $3. Let me have it. Okay. The, the other thing is sales, you have to understand money to really understand sales. Most salespeople do not understand money. Okay. If I charge $3 for this and you give me $3 for it, you think this is worth what? How much? $3. No. You think it's worth more than $3. Otherwise, you wouldn't have given me the $3. See, the salesperson thinks it's worth less. Huh. I should reduce the price. If he gives you $3, it was worth more than $3. Otherwise, he would not have transferred the $3 to me. So anytime I'm paying for anything, that we're going to buy that a half a million dollars on this portfolio. If I offer $515 million for that portfolio, the seller should know, I think, to me, it's worth more. Otherwise, why would I give me $515 million? Yeah. And... If he wants to sell it to me for five hundred fifteen, I know he would rather five hundred fifty million than his property. So you have to understand this is not psychology, bro. This is simple math, mm. and sales is a math game. Yeah, and so uh, it's not a trickery game. Love it. Yeah, Love it. I want to give you like massive credit for setting a good ethical example. Like, like if I'm selling fish, right? If I'm selling fish, I did this interview, right? I get trashed about it all the time. Dude, who wants fish? Who wants fish? That's a sales pitch. It doesn't sound like a sales pitch to you. I'm basically collapsing marketing and sales. Who wants fish? Yeah. Why? Why Why am I doing it like that? Guys, my, this fish is going to go bad. It just came out of the ocean. It's fresh. Literally, literally, I'll cut it up for you right now. It's the freshest snapper caught on planet Earth, and I'm in front of you right now. Who wants fish? That's a sales pitch. Yeah. I, I shouldn't have to go through me. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, it's just, I don't need to trick people. Yeah. Yeah. And I need a big enough audience so that I'm not begging one yeah. person to sell something to me. 
Now, for you guys out there listening to that, like, man, I could never do that. It's because you're not hungry enough. Because you're satisfied and you're happy. And if you're satisfied and you're happy, you don't need to do anything. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's like the drug addict that says, I'm not going to quit until I have to. Yeah. And they got to hit rock bottom. You guys don't even know what rock bottom looks like. Mm. Let me just tell you, for anybody that thinks they need to hit rock bottom, nobody hits rock bottom. They hit rock bottom and then find out, oh, shit, there's another rock bottom and then another one and then another one. The rock bottom you're talking about is a glamorous rock bottom. The rock bottom you'll have to hit based on that is something you cannot even fathom. Because if you could fathom the real rock bottom you have to get to, bro, you you would be like, you wouldn't be scared. You're not even thinking about it. You think you're going to get to this place. Okay, when I get to this place, then I'm going to get serious about my career. No, you, you don't know how painful it gets down there. Otherwise, you can get serious now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to finish it, big respect because your product's helping really my stuff and yeah. many millions of people around the world and you like setting the example that the selling is the thing to be proud of because in my country, like the people who go into say like they love yeah, the bull bolster. I'm like, dude, like it's tricking people, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why I think people see because they see energetic, which is good thing, be energetic, be out there, be outspoken, be angry. It's a good thing. But yeah. then associated because all the movies are rich people, drug dealers, rich people tricking, you know, so they see the associated yeah. with like, yeah, making money, selling is like tricking people. So big respect for that. Yeah. 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 Well, we don't trick anybody here. I was, exactly. I was on a phone call with a lady, my sales guy's talking to her. He's getting nowhere with her. And I'm picked up the phone and said, look, how much money do you have right now? She tells me $70,000. Good. How's your business doing? She's like, I got a dentist business doing 3 million, another one doing 2 million, another one doing 1 million. I've got $7 million. How much money do you have to your name? 70000 plus a retirement account. How much is a retirement account? $200,000. Mm. All I'm talking to her about is her money. Mm. I'm not trying to sell her anything. So do, how would you like to 10X all that? Yeah. How old are you? 58 years old. Good. How would you like to 10X all that in 10 years? Yeah, a Grant. You, is that real, Grant? Yeah, it's real, dude. It's real. Okay, but it's not real if you stay in Minneapolis. You need to get to Miami this weekend. That's my sales pitch. Yeah. Are you willing to get your ass on a plane tomorrow, fly down here to get yourself in a situation to where you could take your, she, she's got a little bit of money right now, take your business from 7 million to 70 million bucks. You willing to do that? She's like, well, I'll try. I said, if you're going to try, you're not going to do it. Let's just keep it real. You're going to hang up, try, flight's not going to be available, and you're going to be like bailout. Yeah. Commit. Now, if that didn't work with her, I would just move on to another person. I'm not going to try to convince her to get on the plane. Like, yeah, yeah. Fill the funnel up. Yeah. And that's what people don't want to do. You know, you guys want to, because you don't want it bad enough. Yeah. People just don't want it yeah. bad enough. Yeah. Yeah. Back to the, or yeah. to obsessing because the book, yeah. be obsessed or be average. What does it mean to be obsessive? Why is it important? And why being average is a failing formula? Yeah. So when I went, you know, back to that treatment center, they said, man, you have an obsessive compulsive personality. I'm like, <laughs> I do. I do, dude. You know, I remember playing games when I was a kid, man. I'd lock in on that game, bro, and I wouldn't unlock until until I got every level unlocked. Yeah. I never, I didn't let go of the thing. Yeah. So if you study successful people, you know, this is frowned on when you're young. But if you study, you know, I interviewed Tom Brady, mm. completely obsessed. Mm. Um, As to be. Like, I've never met a super successful person who wasn't obsessed. Yeah. Every single one of them. Yeah. Uh, Tillman Fertitta's twelve billion he's worth twelve billion dollars. Yeah. He he's he's got, he's had six yachts. Yeah. Built every one of them himself. Completely obsessed. Um Are you else? going to buy that? Huh? Oh yeah. Uh who else did buy? Uh Sam Sam Zell that was you know, Sam was worth six billion dollars more I don't know, he bought couple hundred billion dollars worth of real estate that was maniac mm. all these guys the rockefellers and the rothschild yeah. and the morgans and the vanderbilts in the beginning the vanderbilt family these guys were old shippers in new york okay yeah. grinders uh basically sales guys they're working for pennies 
His mom made him pay. His mom made half of his money that he earned at 12 years old go back to the family. And he's basically moving people from New York to New Jersey on a boat and ends up building the Van- Vanderbilt in- enterprise out of it. Yeah. So these guys were all obsessed. They go to the bank. Ball players, baseball players, football players, basketball players. Yeah. Jordan was obsessed. Oh, huh. was obsessed. Ooh, LeBron was time. obsessed. They, they all talk about obsession. Too. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. Obsession is a gift, man. It's not a problem. Love it. Don't medicate your obsessions. Exactly. Because today's so society, we, like, be quiet, be yeah. calm, chill yeah. down. Look, if you're obsessed with pornography, it's a problem. Yeah. You know, if you're obsessed with women and you like, you just got to go from one woman to the next woman to the next woman to the next woman to the next girl to the next, and you can't ever get enough of it. I mean, sooner or later, you're going to have to confront it, you know, because you're, you're going to hurt yourself, hurt them. Like, you're damaging the community. Like, it's hard in check because we had the best chick. Like, in check. Yeah. But I mean, sooner or later, they're all like, then they start talking about you. Yeah, he's a piece of shit. Yeah. So anyway, you know, you, you you can get obsessed with things that can't pay off. Yeah, is all I'm saying. And you know, I I used to think that if I ever had a family, that it was going to make me less productive. But actually, getting married and having children made me so many times more productive, more creative, more spiritually aware stuff. Beautiful. Like Sabrina just walked in here, and, and beautiful dude, she gives me so much inspiration. Scarlett, I'm, I'm hanging out with Scarlett this morning. I learned so much from these kids. Yeah. Like things just like spark. No, I'm telling like so so many people in chat using like the speech of Sabrina and Scarlett, like, look at that kids right. like on, on the 10 X year. Like yeah. because it's it's not like like eleven, twelve, thirteen, like, oh my they're they're hiding, they're you know crazy. drawing right, right? Yeah. And then you see like these guys like boom, boom. Right. What? Yeah. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah, right. What do you think are three biggest problems of today's society? Whatever money, like, let's talk about it. And three the biggest American problems. Society, yes. America, yeah, let's, or let's or, take America. Because I believe in Europe, we follow. Yeah, America first, we follow. Yeah. So, well, three America. biggest problems, and yeah, how could you fix them? American? Potentially, uh, as an yeah. Uncle G president. Well, Americans are lazy, dude. They're lazy. They're satisfied. They're they're fat. Fat. Somebody created it. They're obese, fat, lazy, nasty. How could you fix that? Excuse making. Let me just finish the list, okay? Okay. I just want to slander as many Americans as possible. <laughs> Irresponsible. Gutless. Uh, spectators. Mm. Disgusting. Americans are. I'm so disgusted with the people who live in this country. Mm. We live in a country that's supposed to represent freedom and courage, and ain't fucking none of that anymore, bro. None of it. It's gone. Bunch of goddamn people that own guns and are freaking medicated. Mm. M- most of the gun owners in this country couldn't find their gun if they wanted to. Mm. And if they found it, they couldn't load the goddamn thing. And if they loaded it, they couldn't shoot it. Mm. Okay, they can't get to it fast enough because they probably they probably hurt themselves running to it, and then they're so medicated they fuck. Uh, what was the number again? They got it in a little lockbox because they don't even trust their kids around them. Mm. So guns aren't even a problem in this country. Mm. I think that that's why we have so much medication and obesity to handle the six hundred, seven hundred million guns we have in this country. Mm. So basically, it's an overmedicated society. That's a big problem in this country, man. And then and then we're all lost in TikTok world. Yeah. A bunch of fakes and frauds. People call me a fake and a fraud. Bro, ain't nothing more authentic to me. I'm the same guy all the time. You met me here. That's you meet me on the street. You meet me at Starbucks. That's Sabrina hears it all the time. Oh, man, you're the same guy out here that you are there. People ask my staff, hey, what's he like behind the scenes? Have you guys ever heard that work for me? Other people ask you? Yeah, what's he really like? Yeah, same fucking guy all the time. Yeah. So um, I'm not dressing up for anybody. I'm not pretending for anybody. I had Don Jr., on a show yesterday, I've been in front of the old man. I've been in front of Usher and Mayweather and Dana White and Fox today morning. Kevin Hart. And I'm like, hey, man, ain't none of these people special. Unless they are. Mm. And uh, what I want to know is, I want, you, I want you to just tell me the real deal. And and unfortunately, you know, a lot of people just aren't real anymore. So that's the problem in America. Now, around the world, if you guys are following us, 
That's a problem. That's a problem, bro. Okay, that's a problem. Okay, people save money in this country. They shouldn't. Yeah. People buy houses in this country. They should not be buying houses for yeah. It's a selfish thing. People think I deserve this. I deserve time off. You don't deserve anything, man. Yeah. Nobody deserves anything. If this country went under some kind of elect- electromagnetic pulse and the internet went down and you couldn't get to a grocery store and you couldn't use a credit card. Let me tell you something. There ain't going to be any days off. You can't find water. You can't find food. We don't know how to hunt. We don't know how to fish. We can't even fucking, I can't even find my, my wife cannot get to the grocery store without putting it in the GPS. Mm. Like we are screwed as a nation because we're so dependent upon electronics. I'm including myself, by the way. Yeah. So I would be screwed. The first three or four days, I'd be in panic and shock. Mm. And then it'd be like, okay, we're hungry. Okay, which one do I eat, Sabrina or Scarlet first? Okay, which one's going to have meat's going to be juicier? <laughs> okay, so, and then they're probably thinking about, who are we going to eat first, mom or dad? Because, like, 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 like sooner or later, bro, you, you know, yeah. you want to live. So all I'm saying is, like, we all have a problem. Yeah. Because if you can't eat, that's a problem for me later. Yeah, yeah. And the neighbors get scared, it's a problem. Yeah. When we push Putin into doing what he did, that's yeah. a problem for Ukraine. That's a problem for Poland. Our country big time. Because it is here. Well, let's not push him into it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, how bad things are in the U.S. and stupid shit on the social media. Yeah. Stupid freaking. There is a really a lot of good people popping here. Yeah. People on your conference are yeah, yeah. amazing. The, yeah. the girl, I forgot the name, the blonde lady talking like super Sarah Blake, hard. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. dude, like. Like you don't, you don't. You're saying you don't have that there. No, no, bro. Yeah, but I mean, bro. the beautiful thing is the world will wake up because you guys can see it now. Yeah, right. So, like, what did you, did you mean me online? Yeah, online, of online, course, bro. online. Yeah, so, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, person. Yeah, we, we the lines online. have been erased. No matter, no matter how much we want a wall down here, yeah. and we should probably have one. Or Israel has a wall, or Gaza Strip, or Russia or China, bro. The walls are gone, bro. Like sooner or later, the Chinese are gonna find out about Grant Cardone. Yeah. They will, and then people start waking up. You all, you know, talking about transition. Yeah, sounds like like you want to leave a little bit the space of influencing. No, I, I I just will not be. You know, the Grand Cardone everybody knows today will not be who who you know me as tomorrow. Yeah, that that that, that there will be a Cardone, but Harry on Bank. Okay, like you're all for it. You know, Sabrina and I were having this conversation yesterday. She's sitting for you viewers. She's sitting over here watching the interview but you know if she chooses it to you know uh she could step into this thing and turn it in from a five billion dollar company to a 50 billion dollar company boom you know you 50 billion dollar company man it starts getting real boom now you start making some people start checking in with you yeah, yeah. that's like mr cardone yeah mrs cardone yeah. right um uh, we would like to do this. Uh, we could use your contribution, and if you could help us with this and that, I mean, she could start literally like that's why that's why that that's the transition now. Like early on, I was like, I need my money, I need my money, I got to get my bills, I need mine. Now we're like, no, no, we want to give people. Money. Yeah, you distributing monthly, like how much? Yeah, we distribute we distribute about five million dollars a month. I want to get that to at least fifty million. Yeah, fifty million. I don't got the check this month, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. So we want to send fifty million a month out. That's my next wow. target, and then I want to get to if I can get to five hundred million a month. Wow! Every month, six billion dollars a year sent out, bang, a year. So when you start sending money out, right? Because that's what people really want. People want money, and they need income, and they need support. And so, anyway, there's an opportunity right now with the way the world's the w- way the world's going. Like we we you know people are starting to resist institutions. Yeah. They're starting to resist the way things used to be and starting to look for other ways to do things. And so if there's a fracture in the system for a guy like me or others to fill in, um, the banking system is going to get disrupted. Mm. So why why can't I fill it in? So are you really going for a bank? Oh, 1,000%. 1, 1, I love it. Yeah, I love it. it. A world bank. Boom. Yeah, so I just want to look, look if, if my... I appreciate you coming in here. If I, if my example of what I do, the good, the bad, the ugly, yeah. the mistakes, the errors, the way I say it, like it or don't like it, 
I just want that to be an inspiration of either how to do it oh, you are. or how maybe you're like, okay, I want to do it, but I don't want to do it like you know, That's cool too. Sabrina's going to do it different than I did. She's going to do it much more elegantly. She's going to be much more sophisticated. Uh, and she should, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't have to come up from the mud. Yeah. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least that's a, that's what I tell myself. Now, again, your influence is unbelievable. How I said, like, 6,000. You dude, if I had your voice and your looks and that beard, bro, it'd be crazy. <laughs> I'd be a wrecking ball. Do you realize that you are artist? Oh, yeah. Uh, one hundred percent. Because you can be tough. You can be hard. You can be entertaining. You can be super funny. Yeah. You have it. All in your, the, I think that's why you are, you are a likable guy. Yeah. And the real people recognize real. Yeah. So you have it. Snoop Dogg. He, yeah, he's quoting Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Real recognize real. Yeah. So Thank you very much. I really appreciate yeah. it. Uh very special moment for Czech and Slovak. You were my inspiration. Uh, so all the people thanks me for all the motivation, get out on drugs, making businesses, really like double their income in half year. It's my movement, double, because uh, like next gradient. He was the man who inspires me for the event for 6,000 people, the biggest one. So I want to really thank you very much over the bottom of my heart. You inspired me to do that even for 6,000 and it helps so much people. And I'm giving the credit, like, this is the man. Everybody needs some mentor. I'm yeah. I really correct. believe in that. Everybody needs in some phase the mentor. So thank you very much. And uh, th this is the gift for Czech and Slovak Republic, this interview, because it's the first. Uh, let's, uh, I'll come back. We'll go back to Prague and do something. Yeah, bro. Thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you.